Hello and welcome to Pentecost Worship with Portage United Church of Christ. I'm the Reverend Mary Kay Schooneman and I am excited that you are joining us this week for our online worship service. Pentecost is one of the most exciting days of the church year. It is the day we remember and celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit upon the church, a gift that comes in wind and flame. What do we do with that gift? That's the question we must all face as disciples of Jesus in the 21st century. So stay with us for these next moments of worship as we prepare our hearts and our minds, our bodies and our spirits to receive the igniting Holy Spirit of Pentecost. There's a spirit of love in this place. There's a spirit of love in this place. You can't see it, but it's there, just as precious as the air. There's a spirit of love in this place. There's the presence of peace in this room. There's the presence of peace in this room. In God's tenderness is found peace that passes human bounds. There's the presence of peace in this room. Oh, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh 
come, Almighty Spirit, come, Almighty Spirit, come, 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 Holy Spirit, come, 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 Almighty Spirit, come, The grace of Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Come, Come Holy Spirit, Spirit, rattle the rooms in, in which we are hiding. Shake the tired foundations until, until unjust institutions crumble. Break the rules that, that keep you and any of your people out of our sacred spaces. Then lift from the dust and rubble a new creation. Come Holy Spirit, enter our lives. Whisper our names and scatter your gifts of grace with wild abandon. Give your silent strength to all imprisoned and let your raging fire be our sign of liberty. Come, Come Holy Spirit, Spirit help, help us to find ourselves in vital places, bringing your word and freedom to the, the poor, poor, the oppressed, the outcast. outcast. Call, Call us, lead us, urge us to draw your circle of, of compassion wider and wider still. Amen. <clears throat> so a few years back, a friend of mine who is a professor of fire science engineering told me, not randomly, but because I asked how fire worked, he told me that when we toss a piece of wood in our fireplace or on our campfire when we're out camping and then light it, it's not the wood that burns. The wood gets decomposed into gases before it burns. And it's these gases that are actually burning, not the wood. This is why it looks like flames are dancing up <coughs> above the logs. The same is true with a candle. We light the wick and that heat starts melting the wax. And then the wax gets absorbed up the wick and turns into gases. And it's the gases that burn. And that's why you always see that little kind of hole there around the wick when a candle is burning. And this is why, if you're ever out watching firefighters doing their job, you'll notice that they point the water, the hoses, up above the flame, not directly at the flame or at the bottom of the flame, but up above the flame, because what they're trying to do is drench those gases so that the gases don't continue to burn. And Chris and I probably extremely oversimplify that. But I do know they aim up above the flame because they're trying to put out the gases and not so much the flame. Now all this is to say that this has given me a really powerful image for Pentecost. That it's not the wood or the wax that burns. What burns is what they are changed into. What burns is what they are changed into. Now, as we imagine the Holy Spirit descending like a mighty wind and tongues of fire upon those first disciples who were about to become apostles, <clears throat> as we imagine that Holy Spirit descending upon them like flame, think about this. On Pentecost, what burns? is what they are changed into. Could this be true for us? Now, what burns is 
what we are changed into. Now, Christian tradition tells us that Jesus appeared among his disciples after the resurrection. We even talked a little bit about that last week when it was Ascension Sunday. He came among them and stayed with them for 40 more days, teaching them about the realm of God. And he told them that after he was gone for good, God would send them the advocate, the comforter. In the first chapter of Acts that we heard last week, he tells them that they will be baptized by the Holy Spirit and they will receive power. And for the next 10 days, the disciples go to that upper room where they were staying and they pray. Constantly devoted themselves to prayer. They had no idea what was going to happen. They had no idea when it was going to happen. Jesus did not tell them in 10 more days. Jesus did not tell them on Pentecost Day at 9 o'clock in the morning, this will happen. So they didn't know what and when anything was going to happen. I'm pretty sure, though, that they probably expected a comforter, an advocate, since those were, had been Jesus' words to them. A comforter or an advocate who would encourage and support them as they went to the ends of the earth, as Jesus told them they would do, as they went to the ends of the earth and spread the good news of the living Christ. I'm pretty sure that they might have been expecting the Holy Spirit, but, you know, probably like that pretty little dove that descended from heaven at Jesus' baptism and was accompanied by those wonderfully comforting words, you are my beloved child. Or when it came to power, sure, they were probably expecting power, but maybe power like what Jesus had, the power to heal people, the power to free people of diseases like leprosy, the power to cast out demons. Or maybe they would receive power like Jesus had, this tremendous power to tell stories, to tell parables that would completely confound the Pharisees and the other authorities and have the power to convert tax collectors like Zacchaeus. I'm guessing that's probably what they were expecting. Wouldn't you? I am pretty sure that they were not expecting a comforter who descended upon them as wind and fire. A comforter who scorches. I am pretty sure that they were not expecting to receive the power to speak in languages that they could not understand. Languages that they had probably never even heard before. And I'm almost certain they did not anticipate that they were going to have to be changed into something new in order to burn with this power. We 21st century disciples really find it no easier to anticipate this uncomfortable comforter who ignites change. We prefer the domesticated and individualized comforter who comforts us in our grief and in our doubt, who sends us nice, gentle nudges to prod us and encourage us on our way. I don't know about you, but that's the experience of the Holy Spirit I prefer. But Pentecost reminds us that God's spirits come to us as a community. God's spirit comes to us as a community, not simply as a bunch of individuals with our individual experience. And more often than not, 
that spirit comes to us in discomforting ways. Pentecost reminds us that God's spirit comes to disrupt and disorient us from our routine and routinized ways of engaging the sacred so that something new and something holy can be born within us and among us. Because, my friends, what burns is what we are changed into. There is no denying that the church, the capital C, and that this church is in a Pentecost moment now. I would say that on the whole, the church, and probably this church too, I would say on the whole that the reason Pentecost or this Pentecost moment seems unlike any other, or that prior to this Pentecost moment in 2023, churches never really thought that there was such a thing as a Pentecost moment for the contemporary church, unless you went to one of those Pentecostal churches. And I would say that the reason for this, that we never thought much about Pentecost moments, is because we were so comfortable with our comforting comforter that there was no need to pay any attention to the winds of change blowing around us. But now they have descended upon us. And the window panes are rattling. We can no longer put off receiving the igniting spirit of Pentecost that is opening us to those new ways of discipleship and of being church. Ways that can far outlast any of our planning and even any of our imagining. And you know me and imagining. We are now in that space between the wood and the flame, waiting to catch fire. The space of anticipation and expectation. When the disciples emerge from that Pentecost furnace, the community that Jesus had formed was now fired, prepared, and propelled into a new stage of its journey of discipleship. We, too, must emerge from our Pentecost moment, prepared to embark on a new stage of our <coughs> journey of discipleship. So take a deep breath, or two, or three, or four, or however many it takes to receive that igniting Holy Spirit of Pentecost. But we better be prepared, because what's going to burn is what we are changed into. Please join me in this time of prayer. Breath of God, Spirit who appeared like a driving wind, blow away our prejudice and teach us to value all people. Spirit of God, who appeared like tongues of flame, burn in us as a passion for justice and a commitment to change. Spirit of life, who caused the disciples to speak in tongues, speak through us and fill us with the courage to proclaim your love. Spirit of truth, who fills us with the wonder and awe, inspire us to work for a better world and a future where injustice is swept away. 
spirit of compassion. Hear us now as we lift the cares of our hearts to you. Come Holy Spirit and pour out your joy, your hope, and your life on us all as we seek to be faithful in following the way of Jesus. In the power of his love, we pray, amen. Thanks for being with us this week for Pentecost worship. I hope that you are now feeling fired up, prepared and propelled to live this week and the weeks ahead as a spirit-scorched disciple of Jesus's love and passion for the world. Starting next week for the month of June, we're beginning a new series in honor of Pride Month. This series is called Beloved Hughes, Living in the Prism of God's Love. Join us next month as we go on a worship journey, discovering the many facets of God's love and our belovedness. And now I send you forth with these words of benediction, and I invite you to join me responsively. Go out into the world and labor to bring forth new life. We will dream dreams, pursue visions, and speak of God's goodness for all to hear. And may the God who breathes life into creation be our delight. May Christ Jesus give hope to our dreaming. And may the Holy Spirit, our advocate and supporter, set our hearts ablaze with a passion for peace. Amen.